Hi friends, how are you all? A very happy Sankranti to all of you. And in this class, I like to discuss this part, solar energy, basic concepts, the sun and the earth, depletion of sol solar radiation, why the solar radiation is depleted and what is the arrangement of the sun and what is the arrangement of the earth given by God. Let us see the first, what is the sun? different uh, aspects of sun and what is the distance we may be what is the length of the, the what is the diameter of the sun and all these things will be discussed in this slide let us see the largest member of solar system yes of course this is the main member of the solar system so without sun there is no solar system as sun is there and there is some gravitational forces so definitely we have some planets out of which earth is one of the planets so the main member of solar system is the sun and we are the one of the members of solar system it's a sphere of intensely hot gaseous matter actually it's a constructed as a sphere and it contains hot gases and they have always burning and its diameter is 1.39 into 10 to the power of 9 meter so this sun is having this much of diameter 1.39 into 10 to the power of 9 meter. So the average distance of sun from earth is 1.495 into 10 to the power of 11 meter. So this is the average distance of the sun from earth. So actually some days the sun is near earth is nearer to the sun and some days it is far away from the sun obviously in summer it is very nearer and in winter it's very far so he has given us the average distance so he has taken the average of every day He's collecting the distance every day and finally he has given the average of distance of the sun from earth so the innermost region called the core is the temperature of 8 into 10 to the power of 6 Kelvin to 40 into 10 to the power of 6 Kelvin. So this is the very good use figure. So it has this much of temperature inside the sun and that part is called core. The core has density of 100 times that of water and pressure of 10 to the power of 9 atmosphere. So these are the some of the figures related to pressure. Let us move on. So such a high inner temperature is maintained by the enormous energy released due to continuous fusion reaction. So the reaction in the sun is the fusion. So because of these fusion re reactions, the con in it can release enormous energy by the sun. So the sun is a big natural fusion reactor with its constituent gases as the contained vessel vessel retained by gravitational forces very nice actually there are so many gases here so so we can call the sun as the fusion reactor because each and every gas in the sun come on, is in contact or the each and every gas is doing fusion reaction in sun and we can also we can definitely say that it's a big natural fusion reactor sun is a big natural fusion reactor but how those things are aligned and those things are accumulated at only one place so that is because of gravitational forces okay so this is the some of the points from various aspects of the sun let us see some other points of sun yeah, several fusion reactions have been suggested to be the source of energy radiated by the sun. Actually, there are several fusion reactions have been done or have been performed in the sun. So, as the gravitational forces are there, the fusion reactions are accumulated at only one place and that what we call as the sun. And out of those, we can see one thing. So, most important of them is a reaction in which four hydrogen atoms combine to form one helium atom. So this is one of the most important 
reactions of of course there are so many fusion reactions happening with so many other gases many gases are there so out of which we can take the most important thing and uh, mostly this this reaction happens so let us see the what reaction is exactly happening so the reaction is so there are four hydrogen atom they will they, they will combine and they will find one helium atom so the mass of helium nucleus is less than that of the four protons so obviously what happened the difference of mass have having been converted to energy in fusion reaction as follows so this is the reaction four hydrogen atoms combine to form only one helium atom and finally there is some energy absorption that is 26.7 mev that means mega electron volt of energy is released in this particular operation and the surface of sun is maintained at an approximate temperature of 5800 degree kelvin so this is also very important point this is the temperature surface temperature of the sun of course inner temperature is obviously may more and more compared to this and let us move on to earth this this these are the points regarding the sun and how the sun will be and uh, how it how what exactly happens in the sun now let us move on to the earth the earth is shaped as a oblate spheroid that means a sphere flattened at the poles and bulged at the bulged in the plane normal to the poles okay, this is very important shape actually it's not in spherical shape it is oblate spheroid that means we need to press them at the poles so that it will be bulged at the plane normal to the pole so obviously it will be bulged at the equatorial line so that is the shape of the earth so the shape of the earth is called oblate spheroid okay that's what it means in the most practical purposes earth is considered as a sphere of diameter 1.275 into 10 to the power of 7 meter okay so obviously earth is considered as a sphere for the calculation purposes and some other practical purposes and the finally they have concluded that the diameter is around 1.275 into 10 to the power of 7 meter so the earth makes one rotation about its axis every 24 hours for one day for one day the earth rotates around its own axis for one rotation so obviously in this one rotation sun will come sun will go again sun will come up to that point the earth completes a revolution about the sun in a period of approximately 365.25 days that means this is a one year in a year the earth rotates around the sun its axis is inclined at an angle of 23.5 degree so its axis is not straight in its an, its inclined at an angle 23.5 degree as a result the length of the days and nights keep changing okay this is the very important point that's why the length of the days and nights keep changing the earth reflects around 30 percentage of the sun's light sunlight that fall on it this is known as earth's albedo so actually whatever the sun sun rays we are getting from the sun the earth is simply reflecting the same up to 30% around 30% of sunlight it has been reflected back to earth sorry reflected back to space or reflected back to space we can call space only that reflection may not reach the sun okay so we can say that earth reflects back to space yeah geometry of earth sun relation so what exactly the geometry of earth sun relations this is very simple diagram to remember all the values so sun is having the diameter of 1.39 into 10 to the power of 9 meter 
earth is having the diameter of 1.275 into 10 to the power of 7 meter and earth subtends the angle of 32 minutes it's not degree it's a minute okay sun rays subtend that much angle on earth and the distance between the sun and earth is 1.495 into 10 to the power of 11 meter so you can easily remember all these values if you can identify and if you can draw this diagram yeah spectral power distribution what is meant by this solar radiation covers a continuous spectrum of electromagnetic radiation so once we know that what is the sun and what is the earth now we can see what is the solar radiation and and we have already know that how the radiation comes that means what is exact reason at the sun to illuminate itself daily so this is the solar radiation it covers a continuous spectrum of electromagnetic radiation in a wide frequency range actually it comes in the form of electromagnetic radiation and it's a continuous spectrum that means it's a huge continuous spectrum there is no gap at all with a wide frequency range it has wide frequency range so about 99 percentage of extraterrestrial radiation has wavelengths in the range of 0.224 micrometer with maximum spectral intensity at 0.48 micrometer green portion of the visible range okay let us see how we need to understand two things actually yes is having some atmospheric layer we already know it so that whatever the area we i mean inside that layer is called terrestrial radiation i mean terrestrial area so we can call it as the radiation within that area is called terrestrial radiation and whatever the area after beyond that atmosphere that means earth's atmosphere is called extraterrestrial area so whatever the radiation we are obtaining from the sun up to that point extraterrestrial area is called extraterrestrial radiation now let us discuss so without the yet sun rays are coming through that extraterrestrial area and it is entering the terrestrial area and then it is entering it is touching finally it is touching yet yet okay it already entered the terrestrial area that means it already entered the earth's atmosphere and after that it touches the earth that's all so in this thing we are discussing extraterrestrial radiation that means in this point the sun's rays are coming up to the atmosphere before touching the atmosphere what exactly happens so before touching the atmosphere 99 percentage of extraterrestrial radiation that means before touching the Earth's atmosphere, 99 percentage of radiation has wavelengths in the range of 0.2 to 4 micrometer. So this is the wavelength range. We will see in a clear picture also, no problem. So with maximum spectral intensity at 0.48 micrometer. So at, it is ranging from 0.2 to 4 micrometer, and maximum value will be at 0.48 micrometer that is obviously the green portion of visible range let us see the next point and all these points will be explained by using a diagram and where we can discuss more so what is extraterrestrial radiation and how it will be 6.4 percent is ultraviolet region so the wavelength is less than 0.38 micrometer 48 percent is the visible region it's 0.38 micrometer less than lambda less than 0.78 micrometer and the remaining 45.6 percent is infrared region and it is lambda greater than 0.78 micrometer so it's very simple to understand and very simple to remember also so there are the visible region is very important visible region means 0.38 micrometer to 0.78 micrometer simple so before that I mean below that visible region it's ultraviolet region 
after the visible region it is infrared region obviously as we know visible region means vzr vzr means first one is violet so before be, below that violet is ultraviolet and after red is infrared so these are the some uh, rules we can easily understand and you, you can easily remember the figures so these are the extraterrestrial region how extraterrestrial region is divided into these three parts from the point of view of terrestrial applications of solar energy the radiation only in the range of 0.29 to 2.3 micrometer is significant so we, we don't like so all other things are not that much important as per solar energy is concerned so the applications of solar energy is concerned only 0.29 to 2.0 micrometer is significant of course that is abundant in earth i mean in sun rays towards earth so spectral solar irradiation distribution both for extraterrestrial and terrestrial are shown in the figure okay that figure will be shown so the area under the curve indicate the total radiation intensities in watt per meter square okay this is this can also be explained yeah this is the figure this is the figure we can see here on x axis there is a wavelength and on y axis solar irradiation distribution is there that will be in watt per meter square micrometer so whatever we are seeing the top one there are two curves here one curve is like this at the top this below that curve there is one more curve yeah we can identify two curves here so the first curve is Mm, extraterrestrial radiation and the second curve is the terrestrial radiation so we have already explained this extraterrestrial radiation has huge thing so it will be depleted to some lesser level to terrestrial radiation that means after entering to earth's atmosphere so let us see here as we have already discussed it is from 0.2 to 0.48 micrometer so here it is so we at this point so from with less than 0.38 it will be like this it will be ultraviolet after 0.38 to 0.78 micrometer it will be visible region so more than 0.78 micrometer is infrared region so these are the regions here and we have already obtained that it's 0.48 which has maximum peak we are obtaining so it is obtained here 0.48 micrometer at this part it will be its its wavelength is huge so this comes under around the green color yellowish color, color okay it's it's basically yellowish green color so this is the diagram for it and the area under this curve will give us the solar irradiation distribution in watt per meter square so this is the total explanation of the spectral spectral analysis or you can call it a spectral power distribution of earth or solar radiation on it so let us move on yeah depletion of solar radiation so after seeing this diagram we can say that some radiation has been depleted while traveling from sun to earth after entry after entering the earth's atmosphere so why it happens this happens because of the earth's atmosphere contains so many things so these things can give some reflect can give some answer to the radiation let us see how they will so various gases constituents are there suspended dust is there and other minute solid and liquid particles are present in the earth's atmosphere so what are those so air molecules are there ozone oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide carbon monoxide water vapor dust water droplets so all are there these are the 
thinks what Earth's atmosphere contains. So finally, what happens? So solar radiation is depleted during its passage through the atmosphere. So different molecules do different things. That's why the solar radiation is depleted. It's reducing. Solar radiation is reducing because of these molecules, and these molecules behave differently with solar radiation. So these molecules, some of them stopped it, some of them reflected it, some of them absorbed it. The solar radiation. So obviously, the solar radiation reaching at this reduced what it has been obtained at the starting point of the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, let us see absorption. So, what is meant by absorption? So, selective absorption of various wavelengths occurs by different molecules. So, for each and every molecule absorbs something. So, some different selectively they selectively absorb the wavelengths. So, they they have selected some wavelength. For example, one oxygen is there. For example, it will select ultraviolet radiation. That means it will take that, it will absorb that ultraviolet radiation. In that way, some other molecules are also there, and they will also absorb in different different wavelengths of radiation. The absorbed radiation increases the energy of absorbing molecules, thus raising the temperature. Obviously, this is the beauty of solar radiation. Where whatever if we are Trying to absorb the solar radiation means our temperature will be increased. Nitrogen molecular nitrogen molecular oxygen and other atmospheric gases absorb the X-rays and extreme ultraviolet radiations. See, some of the the scientists identified some of the molecules and what they are exactly absorbing the radiations. So here. Nitrogen, molecular oxygen, and other atmospheric gases absorb the X-rays and extreme ultraviolet radiations. Okay, so the nitrogen is one of the biggest, I mean, one of the used gas in atmosphere. So it it and also molecular oxygen. These two things are and some of of course some atmospheric gases are always there because there are so many gases. They have found only two things. Okay, two gases. These two gases absorb the X-rays and extreme ultraviolet radiation. So these two have been over. And the second one is ozone absorbs a significant amount of ultraviolet radiation in the range lambda less than 0.38 micrometer. Okay, this is the job of ozone. Next. Water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb almost completely the infrared in the region lambda less than 2.3 micrometer and deplete to some extent to near infrared radiation below this range. That's that's it. So here water vapor is there, carbon dioxide is there, and these two molecules ab absorb the almost the infrared radiation. So ultraviolet radiation has been absorbed by Ozone and also extreme ultraviolet has been absorbed by nitrogen and molecular oxygen, and these water vapors and carbon dioxide absorb the infrared radiation. So finally, we will come up with only visible radiation only. Dust particles and air molecules also absorb a part of solar radiation energy, irrespective of wavelengths. That means without uh, they have absorbed different types of wavelengths so this is the what absorption means that means some of the solar radiation has been absorbed by some of the molecules and these are the different molecules and what they have absorbed next scattering what is meant by scattering dust particles in air molecules involve redistribution of incident energy so these dust particles in air molecules they will simply Take the radiation and they will scatter the things. So the, that comes under redistribution of incident energy. They simply change the. They have collected the solar radiation from one angle and they have spread it into so many angles. So the three, they come under redistribution part. 
so a part of scattered radiation is lost to the atmosphere to the space obviously if the dust particle is reflect dust particle is scattering the incident ray in all 360 degrees something some thing can be gone to space obviously and we have simply lost the solar radiation and remaining is directed downwards to the earth surface from different directions as diffuse radiations so so the maybe some of the things have been lost as they reflect back to the space and the other things are reflected towards the obviously towards the sun and that is called diffuse radiation so it is scattered it's the scattered sunlight that makes the sky blue otherwise it appears as black very good so the reason behind that the sun is blue in color is the scattered light so if there is no scattering the sun would have appeared as black but not the blue is cloudy atmosphere if cloud is there what exactly happens a major part of incoming solar radiation is reflected back into the atmosphere by clouds so if cloud is there definitely major part has been reflected back another part is absorbed by the clouds obviously and the rest is transmitted downwards to the earth surface as diffuse radiation so this this is what happened in a cloudy atmosphere if there is a cloud sun won't be visible that means most of the sun's radiation has been sent back and some have been absorbed by the clouds and some have been transmitted towards the earth reflected energy so what is this reflected reflection from clouds scattered by atmosphere gases and dust particles reflection from earth surface called albedo of earth atmosphere system and is 30% of radiation received by the earth reflected energy so how we are getting reflected energy so reflected energy we will get from reflection from clouds clouds have been reflected the energy back and scattered by atmosphere gases and dust particles so some of the scattering energy has been reflected back and reflection from earth surface is also there and that's called albedo around 30% of solar radiation received by the earth has been reflected back so what are the types of solar radiations now now we have studied absorption we have studied scattering and we have studied reflection so now we can see what are the different types of solar radiations beam radiation what is meant by beam radiation these are very important points solar radiation propagating in a straight line and received at the earth surface without change of direction that is in line with sun the direction is unchanged so this is called beam radiation that means whatever the beam coming from the sun and directly towards the earth that means it touches the earth that is called beam radiation what is meant by diffuse radiation solar radiation scattered by aerosols mixed dust particles and other molecules the direction of which is changed by reflection and scattering for beam radiation the direction won't be changed that is the that the direction should be the shortest part from path from sun to the earth okay but coming to diffuse radiation the direction is changing we are getting the diffuse radiation from so many directions that was coming from all these particles by scattering and also by reflection global radiation means the sum of beam radiation and diffuse radiations is called total radiation or global radiation of that place so different cases so what are the different cases even on even on clear days there will be some diffuse radiation depending upon the amount of dust particles ozone and water vapor present in the atmosphere 
okay yes atmosphere contains these particles means we can't get rid of these particles so these particles should always be there on overcast day that means when the sun is not visible okay when the sun is not visible all the radiation reaching the ground will be the diffused radiation that means we are unable to see the sun that means we we don't get the beam radiation so obviously the final thing will be the diffused radiation only the radiation thus available on earth surface is less than that is received outside the earth's atmosphere because lot of energy is reflected back and some of the energy is scattered and some of the energy is lost in scattering also this reduction in intensity depends upon atmospheric conditions the distance traveled by the beam radiation through atmosphere before it reaches a location on the earth surface the latter in turn depends on solar altitude that means the distance obviously depends upon solar altitude that means uh, the distance of keep on changing so definitely these are the reasons for depletion of solar radiation let us see the direction of directions of sun's rays yeah these are the directions of sun's rays that means if extraterrestrial radiation point b is there it is falling on the earth the dotted lines we can see from the center let me handle from the center from center the radius is 6370 km and this is earth after that from this point to this point it is 7991 km so this is this part is its atmosphere if extraterrestrial radiation fallen from the point b on point a and if you and this is the horizontal line and this is the vertical line so point c is the vertical line and point b is the extraterrestrial radiation that means you can call it as sun rays atmospheric optical path alpha is there this is angle alpha and this is called zenith angle theta z that will be explained in the further classes so this is the how the direction of sun rays will be extraterrestrial radiation is the direction of sun and these are the relation between horizontal and vertical lines on earth yeah this is the diagram what we have seen we have to identify we have to locate what is terrestrial region what is extraterrestrial region and all these things even beam radiation diffuse radiation okay let us clearly understand this this is the earth and this is terrestrial region you can identify here terrestrial region and this is extraterrestrial region so obviously this is the earth's atmosphere so what exactly happens to earth i mean what exactly happens to solar radiation so this is solar radiation it is a short wave length so it enters the once it enters the earth's atmosphere there is some absorption by the atmospheric medium so there is some absorption by the atmospheric gases oxygen carbon dioxide ozone water vapor carbon monoxide nitrogen dioxide dust etc all the particles in it still there is a beam radiation this, this is a straight line from sun to earth so this is beam radiation sorry hmm so this is beam radiation so it's the direct line so no disturbance for it but still there is some disturbance this is the diffused radiation because of the scattered thing this radiation has been obtained in on the earth and this is the reflection from the earth for long wavelengths this is the scattering of the radiation reflected back to space because of the scattering something has been reflected back to space even these things are the reflected reflections from the earth we, we already called it as albedo 
so it's 30 percentage of the radiation so this is reflected back to space and this these things are so reflected back to space so this diagram clearly explains all the actions so once see this diagram and try to draw this diagram so that you can identify what exactly happens in the earth's atmosphere and with this thing we can conclude our lecture today thank you thank you very much